buy or rent, and where to live. In Asia, urban sprawl and the COVID-19 pandemic have changed the way people live. Their effects are especially visible among the millennials, who are aged between 25 and 40 years old. In Japan, many millennials are moving out of Tokyo into the suburbs as telework becomes the norm. There were 36,000 fewer residents in Tokyo in October this year compared to the last. But in neighboring areas such as Karuizawa, a resort town about 70 minutes by bullet train from the capital, the number of households has only increased. Cheaper rent, abundance of nature, and a slower pace of life made living outside the city very attractive to many families. The Aoki family, for example, left the bright lights of Tokyo for Karizawa in May and have not returned since. Homemaker Ayumi Aoki wants her children to grow up in the midst of nature, while her husband, Mr. Apisi Tumpagdi, is tired of the overcrowded city. Their current home is twice as big, but charges the same rent. They say the air is cleaner and the food fresher too. When I was living in Tokyo, I didn't even know my neighbor kind of thing, right? And then moving here, I get to know a lot of you know, people that living here says freely the sharing stuff to each other. I would say one thing is nature, right? So because space, uh, especially for the uh, young father like myself, to so have two young kids, so a lot of stuff is all come down to how can we have the environment uh, that allow our kids to grow up, to flourish. Home for venture capitalist Anri Samata and his wife Naoko is a high-rise apartment in Tokyo's central Roppongi district. But they may be moving permanently to Karuizawa, where they bought a vacation home in February to get away from crowds amidst the COVID-19 pandemic. The family now spend their weekends there. As the parents work, the three children play in a huge living room and a spacious backyard. As more people move in, demand for schools in Karuizawa rose, such that it has given Singapore-based educator Eaton House the confidence to open a preschool there. It's where the Aoki family sends one of their children. Two years ago, we started seeing a lot of young families coming to Karuizawa, and of course with the Corona situation, there are more uh, families also moving out of Tokyo and to the rural area. I think this trend will continue to grow. In the Philippines, more than half of the home buyers since last year have been millennials. Property developers expect millennials to continue driving sales in years to come. Majority of our buyers before the pandemic and during the pandemic are really the millennials. I didn't know uh, how the pandemic will affect the home buying decision-making process of our buyers. I anticipated the slowdown in our sales. But surprisingly, our sales during the pandemic has remained consistent. And probably because our team has been focusing on targeting the millennials, in Manila, 39-year-old Ace Gadalanga and his wife Sheila decided there was no better time to invest in a house than during the pandemic. Interest rates are at record lows, developers are offering discounts on down payments, and home prices are dampened by the sluggish economy. They bought their first home in April last year, just a month after the Philippines went on a sweeping lockdown. The uh, cost of the properties kasi keeps on increasing. So parang there's no better time okay. than mm -hmm. well, as early as possible. We just got lucky that even in the time of pandemic, uh, we, we got to uh, purchase and uh, process the papers. And uh, we were planning to buy as early as 
2019, but uh, our finances weren't enough. Fortunately for us, during 2020, we found new jobs. But Ace and Sheila may be the exception rather than the norm. Properties in Cavite have grown in value. Salaries of most Filipinos have not grown exponentially, so there's really a mismatch. It's our sad truth that real estate properties appreciate faster than the incomes of employees. So I can really see a big mismatch. There's so many Filipinos right now, especially the minimum wage earners. They really want to have their own property, but we don't have any properties to offer them. In China, exorbitant home prices in first-tier cities such as Beijing, Shanghai, and Shenzhen expose the divide between the richer millennials and their poorer peers, while those from more affluent families are given properties by their parents to improve their chances of finding a spouse and settling down sooner, others often find themselves struggling to own one. In Beijing, 33-year-old Zhang Yingzhi lives in a two-bedroom, 68-square-meter unit in Haidian district. The mother of a two-year-old rents the apartment with her husband, who's an engineer, for about a thousand Singapore dollars a month. She wants to buy a house nearby, but similar units in the same neighborhood cost up to two million Singapore dollars each, something that a couple couldn't afford. 买房的话首先梯度还是最重要的我们叫你想的地方可能就是四环吧四环左右北京的然后这样的话离我工作的相当地方也会比较近一点然后对于孩子的教育也是比较好的因为我们现在买房其实考虑最多的就是孩子的教
But it is clear that COVID-19 has accelerated some trends. Some find it a good time to invest in a property, others turn to co-living to avoid expensive friends and to find companionship. Those who have the means would move out of densely populated cities into the suburbs. It is also possible that some may never be able to own a house in their lifetime. <laughs>